We are only reviewing one resume, the UX resume that got me my first full-time job in Silicon Valley in 2019. So I'm gonna just turn on my critical eyes to reflect on that resume. By knowing what I know right now, I wanna see if that was still a good UX design resume to share with everybody. And maybe I will catch some red flags. Let's roll the intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. This is probably the last UX resume video. Huh, so sad, it's the end of the series. If you want to know more tips, tricks, best practices, how to do your first UX resume, link up here and here. I already have a playlist that documents all the thoughts and learnings and journeys, experiences, best practices, tips, tricks that I have. Yeah, check that out. I'm going to show you the exact same UX resume that I submitted to all those applications so you know what I have gone through, what do I think about the resume at the moment, and what you can expect if you were to apply for some UX designer, product designer role in the Bay Area. Here's how I'm gonna break down my resume and how I would look at it. So we're gonna go over information hierarchy, alignment, composition, spacing, color, topography, and last, but not least, the content. All right, without further ado, let's dive right into it. So let's talk about the first thing, information hierarchy. So that basically means whether I have set up the design system, the design component correctly and clearly to present the information in the order that I want it. So let's see, um, at the first glance, well, if I step back and squint my eyes, I can see there are some bold text as the title and then following it by it will be the medium slash regular font information as a subtitle and then the rest of it will be just bullet points and there are also some more information details like the year of uh, those events happened uh, another great text for the section title academia work achievements uh, but in a bigger font so overall the hierarchy seems to be correct right so you have the school well for academia for school wise education the school is in bold and then mfa in media design practices will be in it seems like it's the same font size but just different font weight so right away of course you're going to pick up the bold title first uh, which which is the intention right the first read second read and third read and third read in this case is obviously the the bullet points right it's smaller font maybe 1.5 to two times as small, right? So what draws you first is the title and the subtitle and then the bullet point. Makes sense. So the information hierarchy wise, quite clear. The name I, I think is smaller than all my other resumes before. Well, same size if not smaller, which is good. So overall, it's, it seems like it's pretty clean, pretty clearly laid out. Next, alignment and composition. Alignment wise, it seems like Vertically, it's pretty aligned. I fixed the indentation issue, the indentation red flag from all of my other resumes, uh, which is great. So I don't have uh, as much of that jigsaw uh, pieces feeling going all along the left edge of my information. There's still some just because I use the square bullet points. So it has still has some negative space there, but it's but not as bad. At least when I do my screen test, I can really get the block feel of information and a pretty sharp or fairly sharp vertical line going from the top edge of the screen or top edge of the resume to the bottom edge. That's good. Composition wise, the ID info is on the top, right? My name and then four pieces of information to get as a group and center that to the middle of the screen. And then it branches out to a two column view. I think I end up breaking it up to two column because I have more information to organize and if I have if I keep everything in a linear way, I might not be able to fit all those internships and achievement and education in there. And also by doing a two column view instead of a one column, I can reduce the width of the text by half. Well, in this case, right? So that there are less words in one line, which means it's easier to scan really quickly what the information, what that blog is about instead of me reading do 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 like that. So great improvement there. It clearly has three sections, one, two, and three. Next, spacing. As you remember, there are different types of spacing. And let's start with white space, empty space, the negative space. So overall, it's pretty roomy, especially when you look at 
There's this giant section of empty space at the bottom, uh, bottom right corner. Quite some space between academia and, and achievement here. The space between my ID info and the first two section. Large enough so that it's pretty obvious that it separates the two different sections. ID is ID, relevant content is relevant content. And I think and believe the, the amount of space here is the same as at the one top here, which, which is great, right? That's what, this, that's what we're trying to achieve even spacing around one element. So if I look at the margin around the entire page, seems like they are the same. If I look at the margin left and margin right, they seem equal. And also the spacing between two columns, right? So space here, space here, and space here. They should be the same, at least visually they should be the same. And it seems like it, not bad. And next will be, space between sections. So the space between section, we covered that uh, for the two column. Uh, it's just one thing that I think is kind of a red flag is the space between academia and achievement. I, I included enough space to separate the two columns, but I don't have a magic number that makes it less random. Depending on how you adjust your spacing in your resume, it also affects the alignment. Because of the space that I included in here, it affects the alignment between achievement and work, just because they have some slight overlap, right? The AI interaction prototypes in Unity does not align with Microsoft Interaction Design Intern or LG Interaction Design Consultant. So it kind of sits in, in, in the middle. So maybe I can shift the spacing a little bit better so that it helps the alignment and the composition. But overall, spacing-wise, I think it's, it's all right, right? Even spacing, negative space, have, have enough space so that I can tell which section is which. Next, typography. Looking at the resume, I think I still use the exact same typography for everything. I believe, yeah, it's just theme pro. That's kind of my font because it's slimmer, it's thinner, not a square font. So everything looks a little bit more futuristic and dynamic and fast, which is kind of my personality. I, don't, I like to move fast, faster pace. So the atmosphere, the visual language, the visual design, the atmosphere that it creates from a resume kind of reflect my personality, which is great. That's what I wanted, right? It works pretty nicely on numbers, especially. Um, but I tested on text in general. It seems fine. So, so. But in this one, I really tweaked the font size and font weight in order to convey the information hierarchy. As an example, the Waymo section, the Waymo text, the title is bold, it's very dark, dark bold text, immediately followed by the subtitle, which is the title of my role at Waymo, about the same line height. So that's why I kind of think they have the same font size, but just different weight. Just by changing the weight of the font, of course, you are shifting the hierarchy. The bolder font is going to have a higher weight. And as you know, the less font you have, the better actually, because you don't have that much noise created by different fonts, so you don't have to compete. Everything is the same family, you just have to tweak the font weight, the font size, font spacing, line spacing, character spacing, kerning, letting, to really convey all you need to do. It's kind of a good practice too, as a graphic design slash visual design exercise. And because I'm using the same font, everything looks more cohesive because it's one family, one style. Next, color. And speaking of color, I have to mention hot pink. No, because I removed all the color in this resume. If you remember my Zynga, Google, and Waymo resume, they do have that darker purple, hot pink, color palette uh, branding on my resume. I stripped away all the purple, the pink, the color branding on my resume so that I can only use font weight, font size, typography, as a visual language to convey the atmosphere, the visual design of my resume. And so that the recruiter or the hiring manager can focus on the content rather than the colors. But if you look at Waymo one, it's actually in kind of a teal color. And the Pinterest is actually in hot pink purple-ish. And that was because this resume was implemented on my portfolio website. I coded it the whole thing and I make that Waymo one and Pinterest lens a hyperlink and they will be changing color. The Waymo is changing between the Waymo blue and the Waymo teal. So it's kind of uh, have the shimmer 
looping, so as a Pinterest, to just give a little bit more fun. So when I hit Command P to print my resume, those are the two colors that come out from it. Last one, content. The most important thing, you should focus on that. And I'm going to go from bottom, I mean top to bottom. So first one, name, you have to have your name. It doesn't have to be a legal name. It's just for communication purpose. Whatever name that you go by, you can put it there. And then portfolio link, which I have, and my R Center EDU, just to make it more legit and self-explanatory that I actually went to R Center by having the rcenter.edu email. Academia, work, the CSS style actually carried over, except that there's no more brackets. I ended up getting rid of the bracket was because the bracket actually take up an entire row of space. And as you know, you keep getting more internships, getting more experiences, you have more content to fill in. You don't want to waste that line of space just for the little bracket. But I keep the CSS ID style. Now it looks like it's just a hashtag. Hashtag academia, hashtag work, hashtag achievement. And academia, let's see, R Center, two lines, two lines, Georgia Tech, four bullet points. One thing you notice, I get rid of my GPA, right? GPA does not matter anymore at this point because I have five internships to hold up the, the weight uh, of my proof of skills. So I don't need GPA to make myself more convincing. By getting rid of the GPA, I can use that empty space for some other maybe more useful information. Uh, emphasis on, I keep the emphasis, which is, I think is important um, to know what you focus on in your school because there's so many classes, so many different directions you can go to. What are you, what are you good at? What are you specialized in? Um, HCI, feature induction, prototyping with AR, body tracking, machine learning. Uh, my thesis is this, Georgia Tech, undergrad degree with a minor, emphasis on this. Ah, so I folded those project recognitions into my education. I, I graduated in 2019. So 2018, 2018, 2018, 2018, they will be the, the most recent achievements and projects and recognition. So I kept those here and folded all the undergrads ones into the undergrad section, which makes sense also, right? And the president of IDXA. So both these two things used to be my experiences, right? My two key experiences, what I did for the IXDA chapter, what I did for the undergrad research. But right now I just turned them into two words, put them in one line, under education. So over time, you should be seeing yourself shifting information around, turning an entire experience to two words and you're fine with it. That's one of my main takeaways working on 50, 60 different versions of resumes. And then work, which is the most important thing, internship, 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 interaction is uncost consultant. I cut one of the internships, which was the one in spring 2017 at Zynga, mainly because that one is more or less on motion design or motion graphic design or graphic design related work. And as I'm applying to UX position, that will carry less weight. And I can probably stretch more on my LG design um, consultancy job that I actually did some interaction design work and industrial design work that's more relevant to UX. And also I do not have that many details to fill in for the Zynga one because I was just working on video ads, motion ads every week and that's it. So I kept Waymo, Google, Pinterest. So three big names really carry some weight on it. And Mulesoft, I kept one line just because compared to the rest of the, the ones is less relevant because this is for enterprise software products and the other ones are consumer facing. Let's see achievement. So interaction is a prototype in Unity motion exam. Ah, okay. So all these happened during my grad school at R Center in the media design program. And these are some of the projects that I find interesting and proud to work on, uh, which is important. You want to work on things that you like, that you're proud of, that you wanted to do as if that was your full-time job, which was one really great line for my mentor. I actually stole his line, but if it's true, it's true. So prototype in Unity, this VR project, another AI project, gesture related. Yeah, so I did a lot of gesture work. So gesture here, body movement for this one. And my thesis uh, was also body movement related. Yeah, so content wise really distilled all my life. Well, not really all my life, all my design, career, all the projects that I did, all the involvement that I got myself into, all the internships, experiences, talks, projects, recognitions, all go in here but in the right order and cherry pick the ones that you like, the one that you're proud of, the one you want to work on, the ones that have weight, the ones that are relevant, the ones that could get you a phone interview, and then you put it all together. So yeah, I end up cutting a lot of stuff. That's why I have so much space here and there. At one point when you look at your resume, 
you are confident even after you cut down so much information that perhaps means you are ready and you know what you're doing yeah so that is the ux resume that i had that got me my first ux design job in silicon valley what do you guys think let me know in the comment section down below what do you think that works and maybe what do you think should be red flag that i did not raise and speaking of red flags I do have one more red flag. I feel like the line spacing could be better because between two bullet points, they seem to have the same spacing as if they were in the same bullet point. So there could be better separation. In turn, might actually help the alignment for a lot of things. Yeah, overall, this is not perfect. By no definition, it's perfect. And with an imperfect resume, I got a flow time. So could you. So keep working on the resume, keep iterating, keep testing it with other people ask your friends, your family, maybe even real recruiters, your teachers, what do they think? Is it easy to read? Any ideas that you have? I want to include this information. Should I do it? Should I not do it? And if you're embarrassed to ask, just include it and then show people and see what they think. It really took a lot of time and let me put this down. It really took a lot of time, energy, sweat to go from my 2013 completely garbage resume into here. Again, it's not perfect, but it's okay. It looks fine. I like it. I still like it, I would say. You know what's the best part even it's not perfect? It gets the job done. With this resume, I was able to interview with 23 companies in Silicon Valley. And I think I did 22 interviews within four weeks. It's quite an interview spree. So if you're interested how those interviews turn out, link up here and here. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers.